This video features creating analysis mask for rosters in ArcGIS. And we usually want to do this step before we do uh, analysis processing in ArcGIS. And we want to make sure that it, the extent of all our rosters is the same. Uh, if we want to, we can just use a rectangular um, structure to the roster. That's fine. Uh, but oftentimes we want to just do the analysis within a certain geometry and oftentimes that geometry can be kind of complex in this case i'm using haiti as the as the um as the extent of where i would want to do analysis so in this case i'm not particularly interested in the water body uh, value that's outside i just want to do some type of analysis that's going to uh, incorporate the land cover feature that I have here. So for whatever reason, I want to do some analysis just on these cells that are within Haiti and not outside Haiti. So to do that, uh, first I need to make sure that my cell sizes are correct between my rosters. That would be the first step. And the second step is I would want to do a mask. So setting up a mask, you want to make sure that everything's in the same coordinate system. Um, in this case, I'm in a degree system or in an unprojected system. Uh, I can still run run uh, this process uh, in unprojected system. That's okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the boundary of Haiti admin as what's called the mask. And there's two ways that we can do a mask. We can either use a roster, another roster and its cells become the mask, or we can actually use a vector feature. So either one will work, and I'll, I'll show you the difference between the two here in just a second. So uh, to get started, I have two things in my table of contents. In this case, I have a vector for Haiti admin, and then I have a land cover feature, or a land cover roster uh, for Haiti. And I'm gonna go to Arc Toolbox, and I want to Make sure that I have Spatial Analyst Tools, the extension clicked on. So I would go to Customize and go to Extensions and make sure it's on. Once that's done, I would go to Spatial Analyst Tools. And then what we want to do is we want to extract features or extract our, our roster based on a mask. So we go to Extraction Tools. And in this case, we're going to extract by mask. So I'll click on extract by mask. Now my input roster is going to be whatever I'm trying to um, select out of or what I'm trying to mask. So I'm going to click on my land cover. So I can input a roster or I can use a feature or a vector feature. So I'm going to use the Haiti admin here. And it's just going to send it to default geodatabase and it'll call it a default name. I'll accept that and I'll say OK. So it'll run the tool and let's take a look at what we get back. So, um, and I, I made sure that, that uh, all the parameters were set up for, for what I wanted back. And so if I zoom, let's zoom into the edge here. We can see that it's clipped out or, or it's created a mask based on this geometry for Haiti admin. And what's critical here is that you can see that you have these little gaps on the edge. And of course, that's because the cell size is relatively large. So if um, you usually want to get your cell size figured out before you do the analysis step of masking, or I should say the masking step for analysis. <laughs> and uh, uh, so if you want a different cell size, make sure that that's done first. So this is what I get back based on um, using a vector feature. So let's, uh, let's zoom to layer here. Now, if I want to, I can use another roster as the mask itself. And let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Art Catalog. And I've downloaded from Diva GIS uh, some Haiti uh, features and rosters. And I have a mask cover. So the mask cover has already been processed and we can see that it's a little bit different in its extent. So let's kind of take a look at what, what that's all about. Um, so if I go back to, uh, let's take this one out. I'm going to remove that. So I have my original Haiti land cover. Now we can see that the value on the edges to this particular roster, they're actually creating a mask that allows for water at the edge. 
okay? So if I want to have that kind of buffer that's water-based as opposed to going strictly to the admin boundary, I might want to use the mask cover that's already been produced by Diva, Diva GIS in this case. So to do that, uh, I would remove my vector feature and all I want now is I just want to have a roster that comes back to me that's the same extent as this mass cover here. Okay, so it's going to go right to, if we zoom in here, it's going to go right to this edge. Okay, so to do that, um, I'm going to do the same process over again. So I'll go to Art Toolbox and I'm going to extract by mask. And this time the input roster is going to be my land cover, of course. That's what I'm trying to mask. And my input roster is going to be the one that's already been calculated for as a mask. So I'll click on that. It's going to send it to default geodatabase. I'll run it. And we can see what we get back now. Is if we go to our table of contents, I'm going to click off Haiti cover, our original input. And we can see that these two are exactly the same now. So they have the same value structure and they have the same extent. So if I zoom to layer, we can see it looks exactly the same. Okay, the colors um, in terms of the symbology have changed, but the values certainly haven't changed. We can see we have a one and a one, a two and a two, a four and a four. Um, everything's exactly the same in terms of the cell size uh, and value structure in the cells. But what has changed is the exact extent now uh, from my roster input. So this is the second way that we can create a mask is based on a roster, another roster. Um, and oftentimes that's how we will indeed create a mask for, um, for roster analysis.